a tutorial, huh? You don't want a tutorial? You all want a tutorial on how to make a Sky Factory server? Is that what you want? Y'all been begging and pleading me on that video to make me make a tutorial for y'all to make a Sky Factory 4 server. Fine. You want to know how to do it? Here's how you do it. Here's your tutorial. Today we're doing how to make a Sky Factory 4 Minecraft server. But before we start the tutorial, please be sure to go over to twitch.tv slash devilybattery and follow me there. That's where I do most of my gaming content from Minecraft to other games. Uh, I do all kinds of stuff over there. It's been kind of inconsistent lately with me being out of college and working all the time. Uh, but come the end of August, beginning of September, when I get back to college and can get a firm schedule set, we'll be good to go and it'll be a lot more consistent. So please, again, twitch.tv slash devilybattery. I look forward to seeing you all over there whenever I stream. And let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do uh, to get your Sky Factory 4 server set up is to go to this website up here, curseforge.com, uh, where they have the Sky Factory 4 page. I will be sure to put this link in the description for you lovely people. And you're going to want to scroll down here on the right-hand side of the screen, and you're going to see server packs. And you're going to want to get the version that has a little R next to it. The R stands for release. That's the uh, most updated and stable version that they have available of the mod pack server files that you're going to want to use for your server. Um, sometimes they'll have newer versions that are have like the B for beta or A for alpha next to them. If you want to use those, if you want the cutting edge stuff, uh, that's up to you. I tend to stick with the release versions. They're more stable, uh, less prone to issues. So once you get down here and you find this, go ahead and just click the download button and you wait for it to download. And once it gets downloaded, I will reconvene with you fine people. Okay, so once you get your Sky Factory 4 zip file downloaded and extracted, you will end up with this folder here, Sky Factory 4 server with the version number. Go ahead, open that up, and uh, first thing you'll notice is all these files. This is not all the files that should be in this folder. We will be installing those right now. So if you want a basic text version of what I'm saying uh, and quite a bit more condensed, you can open the README and read that. It will basically give you all the information you need on how to start this server. But if you don't want to read that, this is basically what it tells you to do. So the first thing you need to do is run the install.bat if you're on Windows. If you're on a Mac uh, or Linux, I actually don't know if this works on Mac. But if you're on Linux, you'll run the uh, install.sh file, and that will install Forge for you. So once you run that, I'll drag this over here for you to see, it will bring up this command prompt saying installing Forge in required jars. Uh, what this is doing is it is downloading the Minecraft Forge uh, server jar that you need to run the server in the first place. And once that gets done, this t usually takes a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and cut here for it to finish up. And once that's finished downloading, we will return and show you what to do next. So stay tuned. All right, so the magic of video editing, that only took about a second for you. For me, it took about two or three minutes, uh, depending on your internet download speed or something it'll probably take it'll probably vary how long it takes it might take you a few seconds it might take you longer so once that's done you'll notice that you got this new forge 1.12.2 with the latest minecraft forge version universal.jar you can leave that alone for right now the next thing you're going to want to do is go look at your settings.bat you're going to right click on that and click edit this will bring up your settings so if you read the readme it will tell you that it, the recommended minimum ram that you use for your server is four gigs, which is 4,096 megabytes. That's that right there. Um, it says you can run it on two, but it's not recommended. This number will uh, change depending on how many people you have playing on your server uh, you know, at the same time. Typically, uh, you might need more RAM. Um, and also, if your computer uh, can't handle yeah, like if your computer only has 4 gigs of RAM, you're not going to be able to dedicate all 4 gigs of RAM to run the server. Um, so you have to have a general knowledge of what your computer can and can't handle, uh, what your computer specs are, uh, to know what you should set this at. Uh, a general rule of thumb is not necessarily more is better, but, you know, more is typically better. Also, your processor slash CPU, whatever you want to call it, does have something to do with how well your server runs as well, as well as your internet speed. So there's lots of different variables that go into determining how, what number you should set this at, and um, what all, uh, what all will affect how your server runs. So you can go ahead and close that. I'm not going to uh, edit this. If you need to give yourself more RAM, uh, change this number. Just take. So there's a thousand twenty-four gig or thousand twenty-four megabytes in a gigabyte. 
So multiply 1024 by however many gigabytes you want to put into your RAM and that will give you the number you need to put right here. So you can go ahead and close that. Once that's done, uh, you can also go ahead and read the Sky Factor 4 Multiplayer Instructions PDF. This basically tells you how to um, create different world types. Uh, Sky Factor 4 comes with a whole slew of different types of worlds you can run for your playthrough um, and when you're playing with your friends. That's up to you. I'm not going to go through that right now. Uh, it basically involves changing a server couple settings in your server.properties file but again you can read up on that if that's something you're interested in so now once you've done that you have your server start.bat if you're on windows this is for linux and probably mac um, you can double click on that and this will open up your command prompt again i'll drag that back over here and this will start to run and in, and get all your files set up for running your server now here's the deal here's what will happen the first time you run the server.bat it will load up all your files. I'll try and talk through this as it happens and I'll show you when it happens. It'll load up all your files and then the server will crash. Why will it crash? Because you haven't accepted the EULA. That's very important. In fact, it might pop up here in a second. It usually doesn't take very long. There it goes. You saw it crash and now you have this EULA.txt file that is here that you need to change the EULA equals to true. Uh, I recommend you at least have a general idea of what the EULA says you can and can't do. Uh, to avoid getting yourself into any sort of trouble but anyway that's uh the eula i'm not going to make you read it i'm not going to go read it for you uh i just recommend you at least have a general idea of what the eula says you can and can't do so once you change this to true you should be able to run your server no problem it should everything should boot up it shouldn't crash hopefully assuming you've done everything right up to this point nothing should crash and you should be in good shape however once the server finishes running, you still will not be able to play Sky Factory 4 with your friends. And the reason why is because you haven't port forwarded yet, likely. You might have port forwarded already for maybe a different Minecraft server. If you have, chances are you won't have to do it again. However, if you've never set up a Minecraft server before, this is your first time, you will need to port forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this server finish loading up. I'm going to let it get all the files where they want them. And I'm going to stop the server. I'll show you how to do that to safely stop your server. And then we will go and port forward for our server. So stay tuned. We'll be right back once all this stuff is done loading up. Okay, so it looks like our server is done loading up. Uh, generally, what I look for to see how the server is done is this unloaded dimension line. Usually that's the last thing that's done before the server is ready to go. And so now to safely stop your server, what you want to do is type in stop, simply stop, and press enter. Now, if you had just run the server like that and left it as is, you would be able to connect to your server if you were playing on the same computer as your server was running on. You could just connect to local host um, or, again, put in your IP, and you would be able to connect just fine. The issue is that your friends would not be able to connect to your server to play with you. So what you need to do to fix that is the first thing you need to do is open up your command prompt. To do that, if you have Windows 10, you can just look, go in the search bar and type in command, um, or you can do run cmd. There's lots of options open command prompt. Whatever you want to do, you need to open your command prompt. Then what you need to type in is ipconfig and press enter. This will give you the information you need to port forward your server. So what you need first is this default gateway. Uh, to What you need to do with this is you need to go into your browser and type, in, type it in to your, uh, your bar up top, your URL bar. And then this will all pop up for most routers. Right now I'm using a Netgear router. Uh, this could look different depending on what router you're using. Uh, sometimes it'll just be a web page. Some routers might not even have this. But by default, most routers, your username is admin and your password is password. If this has been changed, um, I don't know how to help you if you don't know what it is. Uh, it might be on a sticker maybe on the side of your router or something. You can go look at that. But once you get that into there, the first, next thing you need to do is find something that resembles port forwarding or port triggering. For me, it's right here. On your router, it might be somewhere else. I don't know where it is on your router because I don't have your router. Once you're here and you find out where you need to be for this, next thing you need to do is find something to the effect of add custom service, and you click on that. And this will load up for you. Now, service name, you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it Minecraft. It's already popped up for me there real conveniently. Um, you can call it Sky Factory 4, you can call it whatever you want. Then you have your starting port. What you need for your starting port is 25565, and also for your ending port, also needs to be 25565. 
Now that you've got that all set up, this can also be changed in your server.properties file if you don't want to use the port. If 25565 is somehow taken up by another application that is being used on your router, although I doubt it, it might be, in which case you need to change it in your server.properties and then also change it here. And also you need to tell your friends when you give them your IP to do a colon and put the port that you've given this at the end of the IP. Now for the server IP address, for this router at least, uh, you need to look up your IPv4 address and this number right here is what you need to put in at the end here. Now, this is how you do it on this router. On other routers I have seen, instead of this server IP address, it will just have you directly select a device that you're running the server off of. For that, uh, you can go into your settings, your Windows settings, and have that pop up. Go to System and go to About. This will give you your device name here that you need to uh, select for that. I've seen that on some routers. Other routers just have this server IP address. Your, every router is different. Well, not every router. Every router brand is different. Um, so this is how you do it for this Netgear router. Specifically, I've seen it on AT&T routers, um, like proprietary AT&T routers, that you need to select a device rather than do the server IP address. So once you've done that, you click apply or confirm or save or whatever it is on your computer. And once that's done, and once you click save, it should take you back to this page and you should see that you have your service here. Now you should be able to go back into, you can close your uh, browser, you can close your command prompt. You should be able to go back, go to server start.bat, click that, run the server again, and it should be able to be connected to by friends uh, once your server is up and running. Now, to get your IP to give to your friends, all you need to do typically is just go, go into Google and Google what's my IP. And that's the first thing that should pop up. It should give you the IP address that you need to give to your friends um, and that they can use to your server. Now, reminder, if you change the port that you used for the server, you'll also need to give them the port that you used. And to give that to them, they need to put a colon at the end of the IP address followed by the port that you've assigned to your server. All right, that should do it on this tutorial on how to make a Sky Factory 4 Minecraft server. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment down below. Uh, also, please be sure to like this video if you found this video helpful at all. And also, please be sure to subscribe here on YouTube. And also, remember, go follow me over at twitch.tv slash doublybattery so you can see more stuff from me much more consistently, especially starting at the end of August, beginning of September this year. Should be much more consistent. Thank you all for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.